Welcome, welcome to 561 Music. My name's Ben. And I'm Hector. How's it going, Hector? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Uh, you know, as we uh, as we mentioned in the last episode, we uh, uh, we're actually recording two episodes back to back today. Yeah. Um, but uh, um, you know, but that being said, I changed my shirt just because I didn't want to look like I was wearing the same thing. And I, in fact, I'm wearing a shirt that you got me that I actually I like a lot. We've been play, we've been playing together for a while, and, and I've fallen in love with you, Hector. So now I'm starting to buy you things. And we got you a T-shirt <laughs> that says "It's not an effing cello." And the reason we got that is because, for some reason, <laughs> now this is not a new thing. It's this has sad. been going it's on a sad for, thing, really. for decades now. <laughs> for some reason, there is a willful ignorance among the population <laughs> when it comes to double basses. Everyone, everyone just wants it to be called a cello. Even I'm convinced. Even people that know it isn't called a cello, and they, they come I, up and they go like, "I think so." Oh, nice cello. Why is it so big? Nice cello. Every single gig, and you know, at, at the beginning, it's you know, you sort of go, "Oh well." Um, you know, actually, it's not a cello, but it is part of the violin family, you know, um, and it is the same <laughs> shape. It's just bigger and it's tuned the same way as a bass, etc. You explain. But then after like the bazillion time, <laughs> you just got to get a T-shirt. That says I, it's not I, I, I was cello. just in the office there in the, in the, uh, um, uh, the sound room, I guess, if you want to call it that, the uh, control room. And I was talking to James that we just had on the on the previous episode, and we were just talking about the shirt and how people keep asking me, you know, if it's a cello. And I, I said it even changes, it even changes my entire demeanor or or, or how I how I look at somebody. Like literally, literally had a, a woman walk up to me the other day that you know my immediate thought was like, wow, she's you know she's really good looking. And then she said, oh. Are you playing a cello? And I it like immediately, yeah. yeah, I immediately was like, <laughs> well, that's what the that fuck? Then. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> that's that that's then. disgraceful. <laughs> you, completely completely basis? Basis? you can't say that. No, oh. no, no. And that and that brings us to our to our guest this week, Rocky. How's it How going, you doing? What's up? Man? How you doing? doing really? Rocky's a fellow bass player, so uh, um, you know, and and also plays stand up. So I, I I can see where he uh, he feels my pain. I wish I had that shirt in high school, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm going to drive. Like you're playing the cello or the big violin. Like, oh man, yeah. <laughs> it's the worst. It's the worst. So, yeah. yeah, and I'd like to say it's only happened once or twice, but it's just it's a consistent. It's, it's, it's oh, every gig. Every world show. thinks of it every every show. as often as people I think it's ask the school of rock movie that last star was like chill though. It's a bass. I think that was that scene. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, I yes. think that's what planted in people's mind where it's like. Oh, oh, that's cello. A, yeah, and it's that's like a, I don't know. That's a I'm good. pretty sure that ignorance was there prior to, but yeah, that's it's a, a problem. Us basically. That, that's through. actually a good thought, man. Because you're right. She was a cello player, and he said, "Cello, oh, it's, it's a bass." I think that <laughs> helped the ignorance. Yeah, I love Jack Black. I love yeah. you, Jack Black. Well, how you doing, Rocky? I'm groovy, man. I'm happy yeah, to be here. It was fun watching the behind the scenes with Butch and the Fat. Yeah, dudes. man. Well, we appreciate yeah. you hanging out for the for the long haul to do the second episode here, man. So yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. I'm burning the midnight oil here. I feel yeah. like we're all sat up late plotting revolution. It's good times, <laughs> and it's always good. To see you, man. I, you know, you and I go back. We've been we've been homies for a while now. Oh, you know, yeah. and we did a lot of studio stuff. And and like you know, there was a time when you pretty much lived at my place. You know, oh, it yeah. wasn't every night, but it was like every other. You know. Oh yeah, man. Yeah, and those were the days, man. It was good times. And um, I've seen you sort of grow from you know an adolescent into a man. You know, over the last sort of. Six or seven years or so. Yeah, it's been yeah you guys, both you guys know, and yeah. as a teenager, so yeah, well, you got to see many sides of me. Yeah, first <laughs> time I met Rocky was at uh, at Swampgrass, and he was in a band called Junk. Yeah, yeah. how do you spell was, that? J U N K, but there was two dots. There was an umlaut on the U because uh, we were thinking metal. it was not junk. It was like let's just put an umlaut on it, junk. and you know, no one could find us on Facebook. <laughs> junk, junk. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 it's like gent. Yeah, yeah <laughs> that's a pretty fun. cool name. It was, it was fun, man. It was like we searched up Google like junk the band, and there were so many junk bands. So we're like, let's just put an umlaut on it, and it just made yeah. us more difficult to find. <laughs> <laughs> like, worth it. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. So, um, you make you know the lion's share, if not all, at this point of your living playing music, and um, you have done for a very long time. And and you know, I I know that uh, it's something that. You take very seriously, and it's something that um, that you've always aspired to do, and you now do. And, and and you know, I think it's a wonderful thing that you that that you are doing it, and then you manage to make a living doing it. it it's not easy, is it? You know. 
Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> it's, def- it's definitely worth it, man. I couldn't. I-, I joke around and say, you know, it's like if it doesn't have strings, I really don't know what I'm doing. Right. But uh, some people kind of take it the wrong way because it's like, oh man, you know, have more faith in yourself. But it's like once you find your strength, it's kind of like, you know, stick to it. So sure. I just always knew that I always was involved with a guitar or a bass or somewhat. So growing up, I always felt like that was just was meant to like work or just growing as, as yeah. a passion like it had to be string related yeah I, that was my strength i was like i'm gonna like it'll take me somewhere yeah yeah i know that like um meeting you when i did you know i could see you, that there's obviously lots of ways that we're different but there's certain ways that we're the same and and um and just that kind of um the fact that you gave into it from an early age and just were just like, yeah, okay, it's going to be this, you know, I was the same way and, you know, still am the same way. And it's, uh, it's cool. You, you've got to have a lot of, uh, it's not for the faint of heart. I think if someone asked me, you know, should I be a professional musician? I would say, well, you know, you better love it. You know, yeah. you better absolutely love it or they should definitely not do that. <laughs> yeah. Some people think because of the, you know, the glorified dream of, oh, I'm, you're a musician, you get to probably do all this. You know, any job has a struggle. So you could imagine when you choose your struggles to enter in your passion, <laughs> you know, the emotional battles you go through with it. Just, uh, you know, you wouldn't want music to have a bad time. You're like, I want music to be my happy place. I want yeah. it to be like, you know, where I take my energy out to. But when yeah. you have it as a job where it's like, you know, you have to do that one bar gig, you know, where people are watching the TVs and, you know, just uh, background yeah. music or, you know, we've taught a song where we're just like, oh, I don't like this song. But oh, yeah. Absolutely. You got to teach it. So, you know, Again. there's stuff like that. But <laughs> what a problem to have. Right. You exactly. Know I mean? If you are in love with it, you put up with these things because it's just, you know, you're still playing music. Choosing your battles, bad. So yeah. I think having it music themed is just makes it worth going through those like challenges like putting it as a career you know it's funny because uh um you know there's there's this um i guess stigma for lack of a better word um that in order to you know quote unquote make it in music you know you have to have a record label and an album and a band and uh, a tour and you know and all this stuff and you know listen we don't have to all be the dave Grohls of the world um you know, and that's what I love about you. You're a lot like men in that aspect. But the two of you, you know, making your living pretty much 100 percent from music, um, you know, but you're, you know, you're not necessarily, you know, in this, you know, this world famous band or whatever, like you're doing what you love. You know, you're playing, you're playing with bands, you know, you're playing shows, you're both teaching, um, you know, you're both teaching music, you know, um, you know, you're, you're producing music, you're writing music. So you're both making your living as musicians you're both you're both right. literally making your, your living as musicians you know Absolutely. but so so you know if for someone to to label that as a oh well, you didn't really make it as a musician i i say wrong you did make it as a musician because that's what you're doing i mean well i agree with that that's a, it's a fallacy that that is within the music within entertainment in general and i think it's also propagated a little bit by entertainers themselves you know because it's such a competitive industry there's a Mm -hmm. tendency sometimes for people to put other people down a little bit and and the truth is you don't you can't compare yourself to other people you just have to go your own path and just you know that's that's all you're 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 doing what you love and you're a happy guy man and that you can't put a price on that yeah you (laughs) you can't what got you into music at the beginning oh man my father I mean, my whole family from my dad's side is a big music appreciation family. You know, there's some musicians and there's some who are just like massive Beatles fans. Like everyone in our family, like, you know, you had no choice. It's like someone said Beatles and Stowe's, you know what answer you're supposed to choose. So music was always just a core thing. And my dad was a session musician. When he was younger, he did like recording and stuff. Yeah, oh, wow. he involved so, in reggae and stuff, right? Yeah, he did that. Um, he would like he was known as the funky white guy. He would play with like Dominicans. Right. He was like all the like, Hispanic folks and what. Like he would like play all this funk music and bachata and merengue, and cool. he did all these recordings and stuff when like Pro Tools and stuff was coming out in like New York. Right. And so, and he always played guitar when he was younger too. So that to him was a very strong passion for him. And if you look at like any baby pictures of mine or growing up, there's a guitar, a record, cassette, guitar magazine. Like, you know, to me, 
it was so around me. I'm just thinking it's this. And I know yeah. a lot of people, you know, they say they're looking for that thing, you know, like what's going to be my thing. Yeah. It, to me, it felt like obvious because I would just look around and I'm like, I'm just surrounded by equipment and yeah. different styles of music. And, you know, to me, it wasn't like a forced thing. It was kind of like, a, oh, it's this. Yeah. Yeah, that that's that's just wonderful. You know, I I know people my age who still haven't found the thing that they're looking for. Yeah. You know, and like you, in the same way, pretty early on, I was. You know, my a couple of years ago when I was going through a little bit of an existential crisis, I I remember um, you know, saying to my dad, you know, I'm not really sure what, what my direction is right now, and he's like, well, Ben, you've always known. You know, you always wanted to be a musician your whole life, like. You know, this is probably just a little bit of a weird face. He was right, thank God. Yeah. You know, but like, um, <laughs> but yeah, like you know, I've always known too. You know, it just was. Mm -hmm. it, you know, ever since you know my parents could remember, I was just like, yep, I'm going to be a musician. That's going to be what it is. You know, I just went for it. But um, so you weren't um born in Florida, right? You no, in New York, right? I was born in Manhattan. I was yeah. very young. I have right. very faint memories. I was a baby. There was a time where I lived in Dominican Republic for a little bit. Also, when I was young, that's where my mother's from. And but uh, right when I started school, someone was like, "Oh, go to Florida. That's the best education." There's this weird Dominican triangle of like, there's Dominican Republic, New York, and like Florida. Yeah. There's just this weird chain of where yeah. people always go yeah. in, right. like a lot of other Caribbean countries. And yeah. uh, I started Florida around. I think I had to restart kindergarten because they were like, they my my birthday September 11th. And that's when they passed the law where it's like, if you were born at this date, you had to wait another year to go. So that law passed. Huh. And um, that law passed. I'm totally blanked out. That passed. They looked up my like kindergarten certificates like, yeah. that's not American education. Do it again. Oh, wow. So after that, you know, I was in Florida like for a very long time since yeah. then. I have okay. a I have a December birthday. And so I had I had a similar situation where, you know, instead of. Sort of starting kindergarten or whatever as you know whatever age, and then you know you're supposed to be I guess five or whatever. And instead mm -hmm. of starting at like five and then um, you know turning six during the school year or whatever, yeah. that law wasn't quite in place yet. Mm -hmm. But um, so the cutoff at that time was like January first, and I have a December birthday, uh, and so I actually started when I was four years old. And so yeah, so I was, uh, I was, so I was, was the opposite. It was yeah, the other direction. Yeah, so it was weird. Like you know, I got to, I got to like I see, senior year in high school when I was seventeen. You know, okay. Because so, like, I was going to say, uh, hopefully you had the same problem when you were the oldest and the tallest yes. <laughs> in your class. <laughs> I was, I was <laughs> For me, that the was the youngest and the tallest. Yeah, that was going to say it's a different crazy. situation. I was the oldest and tallest of my. Surrounded by, by an enormous sort of no. like big strong he bass looks, players. He and... looks so little. If you guys are watching the video yeah, instead yeah. of listening, Ben looks so little between the two of us, <laughs> six foot plus Got guys. I chair. gotta say, it's a nice feeling. And I don't usually get to feel like this. So well, I'm Rocky makes me it. feel short, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, six yeah. four and he makes me feel short. <laughs> oh, yeah. I tell you what, a large. Larger stature definitely helps with with manhandling the bass, you know, especially I the standard. I think so. I think yeah. I make a bass look like a guitar yeah. <laughs> in its yeah. own aspect. Yeah. So yeah. Totally, guitar yeah. becomes a ukulele at that point. Yeah, maybe that's maybe that's the problem with the uh, with the upright bass. You know, people see us; we're so big, and then we have the upright bass, and it looks like a cello to them because <laughs> yeah. it looks smaller than it actually is. Yeah, <laughs> that, yeah there you go. That might be. A <laughs> we point. might have answered it. Now the t-shirt seems a bit harsh. Right, <laughs> right. Now the t-shirt just it's seems just a hard. Truth that. It's never going to change. There, actually, that's how I like with upright. I remember in middle school, like, my parents signed me up to an orchestra program, and I didn't honestly didn't know. One upright bass was cello viola. I didn't know any of the names. I just knew violin because that's just cartoons would have a violin. So they yeah. talked about that more. So I remember trying to be like, oh, I'm going to sign up for the violin. And, of course, everyone else did. My teacher looked at me. I was like, no, nah, you're playing bass. You're, you're, right. you're the only one who can physically hold this instrument. Yeah. And, like, for me, a violin, I'll move, like, my finger one <laughs> yeah. inch over, and I'm, like, three half steps yeah. away, you know? So it was impossible to play and the, that And this was the double bass for yeah. for orchestra and stuff? Yeah. Was this at, at Bach or? No, I actually went to Jefferson Davis, okay. which is now Palm Springs Middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, uh, I would say, it's like a, they called it, like, a magnet school. I can't try to remember. It was kind of like a wannabe art school. Yeah. The funds weren't there. 
That's <laughs> from funny. The hearts, I did. But, uh, I right. did a. Uh, Some I, people supposed to go to Bach to Dreyfus. I was like the few who like made it into Dreyfus. Yeah. So it's like mostly it's like it's Bach to Dreyfus. So. Yeah, that's pretty amazing because because yeah. uh, like my daughter really my, compete for that. Yeah, and, my daughter's in Dreyfus now, and it's and it's like a really good percentage of the of the kids that go to Dreyfus are Bach students. Yeah, hey, for people who don't know who Dreyf, what Dreyfus is, can you explain a little bit? What it yeah, is? yeah, yeah. So um, so Bach is Bach Middle School of the Arts, and it is it is a. Uh, um, is is it a, a mag? Is it a, a mag? Considered a magnet program? Probably. I guess that's I guess what it's so. called. Yeah, it's a magnet program. It's a magnet school. Um, it's not even just a program. The whole school is an arts school. So they mm-hmm. have like dance, theater, uh, communications, music, um, just all sorts of stuff, and it's all arts based. And so they have all your core stuff: math, English, science, et cetera, your STEM, your STEM program stuff. But they really focus on the arts there. That's great. And that's a middle school here in West Palm Beach. Um, shout out to Bach and uh, all our friends at Bach, include, oh, Bach. including my sister, I who happens to be the uh, d- director of the Bach Middle School of the Arts Foundation. And then, uh, and then, typically, um, like Rocky was saying, typically most of the kids there try to feed into Dreyfus. Then, and Dreyfus is the high school of the arts here, which used to be. It used to be Twin Lakes High School. It shut down. The buildings yeah, were closed for forever, and then they reopened under the name Dreyfus uh, School of the Arts. It's been it's been there ever since I've been there. Yeah, it's been there for a while. It's yeah, been there for right. a long while, and so they basically are the same thing, but a high school. They they've had the five you know areas of of uh, dance and music and theater, et cetera, and communications and stuff, and and they um, they focus on the arts. And again, they have all their math, science, and English and all their STEM stuff. In fact, my daughter's taking AP classes and stuff, so they're, right. they yeah. have, you know, difficult classes there for your regular STEM stuff, but right. but then yeah, they have all come out the, like a ditzy sort of like art kid, like it's, yeah, it's got she's, some substance behind Well, it she's well. doing, I mean, she's doing communications or whatever, and, and some of the classes that she's taking, she's a freshman this year, and some of the classes that she took this year um, you know, she's already like, she's already doing like crazy editing in Final Cut Pro and stuff like that. That's great. You know, like crazy video editing and stuff. Like she's showing me some of these projects, and I'm like, I'm like, damn, that's that's like a lot of people don't get the credit of communications yeah. as an art, but there's so much in that involves in media, graphics that, and yeah. design and all that because stuff. Because I, yeah. I remember driving people like, oh, you know, communications, whatever, it's not mm-hmm. painting or whatnot. But I remember, you know, yeah. I used to sneak around in different buildings in between classes and I would go through communications, you know, they're all on their computer doing this yeah. wizardry and that's editing and manipulating images and video is an art form. Oh, absolutely. And it's yeah. itself, well, and digital, but, you know, digital art as a, as a whole is, is an art form, you know? Um, yeah. it's funny. It's funny that you went to, uh, Jefferson Davis. So I, I, uh, I did oh a, my God. I probably many moons before you went there, but I, I did, um, I was going to a private school and I needed to do a, um, uh, summer, summer math class or something that I had failed or whatever in middle school. And my, my school did not offer it as a summer course. And so it was either, it was either taken out of public school or, um, or repeat the grade, basically, yeah. and so I ended up having to go to some, uh, to Jefferson Davis for, oh, <laughs> for summer school. So, really? so that was my brush with Jefferson Davis. Right. Yes, oh, there you, go. <laughs> you guys are locals. This I, I feel yeah. like I feel like um, you know lacking in a bit of the the local knowledge around the table with you two guys is pretty awesome. Uh, I, I guess it's appropriate on a local music podcast that we talk right. about these things. But yeah, but a lot of my students have been to Bark and Dreyfus and, you know, when I worked at School of Rock and I know there's kids um, here at Live Music Community who go to, um, you know, Bark and Dreyfus and I've heard lots of good things about them. So, you know. I've had students, like after I graduated, you know, I have students now who go to Bach and yeah. I have had students who were in Dreyfus where... I remember teaching, like, you know, we'd be, like, maybe four or five years difference, and, like, there'd be, like, one of my students who has my same history teacher, and I'd be like, yo, tell this guy, like, I'm teaching you, because I used to be the class crowd in school, in, like, in Dreyfus, so if they would hear that I'm a music teacher, I'm doing something with education, he'd be like, oh, my God, <laughs> stop working with that guy right now, so, <laughs> so it's pretty cool, kind of, like, having the flip route where it's kind of, like, you know, I like teaching now. It's like, there you know, you I like educating people. Not only that, there's students who've like going through the same path I did 
not in like the orchestra, but yeah, you know, yeah. they went to drive us. I'm like, that's pretty cool, you know. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Just seeing the cycle going and see where you know, there's some students now that they're in college now, and now they're adults and seeing them doing their own thing, like. It definitely enriches the music scene down here. Very often when I'm looking at bands and things and people, uh, and I'll, I'll go to their Facebook or their Instagram or whatever, and I, you know, I'll be like, oh, look, they went to Dreyfus. You know, there's a lot of people in the scene who've, who've been to those schools. And, yeah. and you know, that is can only be a good thing for local music, you know? Oh, of course. Yeah, of yeah. course. It's great. I think, um, you know, there, there's a lot of stuff down here. And I've said this a million times on the podcast, but it's underestimated how many good musicians there are down here. Yeah. They, they don't all stay here. A lot go to New York and go to L.A. and Nashville, but, but n not all of them, you know? Yeah. There's like yeah. a bunch of people here well, who are great. And what's crazy is there's, um, you know, there's Bach Middle School of the Arts, there's Dreyfus as a high school that it feeds into. Um, there's actually an elementary school that people, it doesn't get talked about very often, but there's an elementary school that feeds into Bach. Right. And, uh, really? you, yeah, it's UB, UB Kinsey, I believe it's called. Um, and so, I mean, I've had friends who's, whose kids have gone there and stuff. And, I mean, these kids are like in first and second grade playing like some ridiculous, like, you know, violin stuff and orchestra stuff yeah, or whatever, sure. you know? Yeah, I mean, like they're already like being taught some amazing stuff. And so That's by the great. time they get to Bach, you know, they're already, you know, whatever middle school they go to, um, they're already like pretty seasoned musicians, you know? We're talking like sixth grade here, you know? <laughs> so you know Hugh who uh, um, runs Paddy Max? Yeah. His son uh, plays a saxophone and... um. And I was tasked with about six months' notice to get him into Bach, which was like a b oh, big deal. Yeah. But we got That's him in. Pressure. We did it. We nice. did it. Oh, nice. It was him who got in. You know, I just helped him. But I tell you what, it was a. Yeah, I felt like we were running to the finish line there. You know, because it's very much coveted. You know what I mean? It's pretty important getting into that school yeah. down here for yeah. sure. Uh, um, yeah. So, uh, in terms of like, your, we kind of touched on it a little bit, but like in terms of music. What what would you say that the, your most notable like early influences were? Early influences, yeah. musically. Yeah, I would say right around when I started playing bass guitar, that was just a whole new world where it was like, I remember you know I played upright bass. We were talking about yeah. it. I played guitar. That was my first instrument when I was five, and eventually my church needed a bass player, so I kind of put the two and put together. And, you know, I was very root note, whatnot. I remember, go, you know, middle school, like early 2000s, there's a lot of pop punk and everyone's, you know, single notes and bass is boring. I'd always people say, like, oh, why are you playing bass? You got to play guitar. Guitar is cool. I'm thinking, man, like, who's an outstanding bass player? And I just remember Googling outstanding bassist. Yeah. And then the first thing I saw was the Red Hot Chili Peppers cover of Higher Ground. Yeah. And you hear that boom, but and I'm thinking, what the, what the hell is that? And I see a live video and it's a dude playing bass yeah. doing that. And I'm like, who is he? I found this flea. How do I do I went that? down this flea rabbit hole and I'm like, he just made bass like, oh, that's what I want to do. Yeah, like, man. he's making it forward. It's not the background character anymore. Bass yeah. is like up front. Oh, for sure. So man. flea, I would have to say, is like, one of my big dudes right yeah. now. And he's like an extension of I you know, bass player. You know, I mean, it's like a lot of bass player. I think that's a cliche. They're like, oh, yeah, it's Flea. But well, dude, I love Flea. He's, he's just a great I just character. Think that's being honest. They say, no, everyone loves him, you know? Flea is, I mean, as a person, he's beautiful. Yeah. How he dances and grooves yeah. out and how melodically he approaches the instrument, you know? Yeah. That made me think, like, wow, that does not sound boring. Why is everyone saying bass is boring? hear this you know yeah oh, no, and i remember sure. backing track and you know thinking what he liked to i mean and there was a lot of funk stuff too so there was bootsy collins they, my they, dad's they. a huge like james That's bound friend say. yeah you know like my i appreciate my pops showing me some good music too so eventually i had to go down the rabbit hole and like found out some old funk music with like parliament funkadelic yeah. you know james brown with bootsy yeah but then flea was a rocker too and so there was like Zeppa and so John Paul Jones, who was also the mastermind. Anything that wasn't guitar, bass, or drums, it was John Paul Jones yeah. doing something. So he's going gnarly. Yeah, yeah man. Geezer Butler, like, you know. Yeah. Those were like the first people, were, like, you know, I would say that made me hear the bass and feel it. And I'm like, they're not just playing one note or one hour, or even like John Nth Whistle. Yeah, you know, I mean, these are all like older cats now compared to Flea. John Hammers was just a beast. Was just he was the only guy where I'm just like, homie's just like standing there. 
<laughs> like imagine if he was like into it, man. Oh, that's true. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's going crazy. It's like that. <laughs> it's so cool. So there was a lot of those influences where, you know. I, I live by the first four letters of a MAME. I love rock music. And, yeah. you know, a lot of my bass player influences were stuff from back then because when I was growing up, I always was like the kid who I was a slower thumb, but it was because I didn't like being part of the in crowd. I didn't like the most popular thing whenever there was like 2000s, you know, like ghetto rap and like pop punk emo stuff. I'm like, I'm going to listen to the Gator. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Well, like well, I'm listening to my dad's cassettes and all of yeah. that, you know. Just hearing, like, what was I missing out? And it wasn't until I was, like, a teenager where I'm like, all right, I totally missed the 90s. I was, a, <laughs> I was like, a child. What was happening during the 90s? And, like, you know, I'm still living under a rock right now where it's, like, catching up to music from back then. But right, yeah. a lot of my musical influences really come back from, like, the 50s and 60s like if Ooh. i could like honestly like have a time machine i'd go back to the 60s oh, and like yeah, break man. the time machine hell yeah <laughs> like, i'll just stay there so yeah. okay so as a bass player i gotta ask you you know you you named a lot of a lot of really amazing bass players there and they're but a lot of them are what i would say the obvious choices if, uh-huh. if you will um who would you say, in your opinion, is one of the most underrated or, you know... Underrated bassists. Yeah, yeah meaning, meaning basically someone that you think is just amazing and people just really don't call him out as a great bass player, don't really give him a lot of credit, or her. Okay. Or hmm. that. I gotta I got, I got <laughs> think, think of that one. Because there's some modern bass players now where they're you starting to pick up a Thundercat. high... Thundercat is a guy, he was one of those... Underdogs, Thundercat mm-hmm. underdog. Um, <laughs> he was like this LA session dude. He was in suicidal tendencies. He did stuff yeah, with man. Snoop Dogg. Yeah. He was just like this dude played at church all the time. He got through this record label with a guy with um, Flying Lotus, and he started doing solo stuff. So he was a singer songwriter, but with a six string bass. He's doing chords, yeah. all this stuff, and eventually he grows up being like he's a he got his Grammy, like award for his record he's directing stuff i feel like his name is starly popping up but thundercat is one of those dudes where like homie has like these anime get-ups and yeah. like you know he's such a character kind of like flea you know oh, like he wore the yeah. wackiest yeah. things but it's like his form of expression i think thundercat is was once in there and i would say that back then but he's now blowing up if there's a guy right now his name is mono neon you Mono might, neon. You, you, it's this dude where he has like these crocheted masks and like neon colors, and he plays. He's lefty, but he plays righty and leaves right. the strings upside down. Like, and he does oh, this wow. very Jimmy avant-garde Hendrix. funk gospel yeah. fusion. Cool. And he's blowing up now. He was actually the last bassist for Prince before really? he passed away. So that helped oh, him go up, yeah, and now he's playing yeah, with all yeah. these other cats. Yeah. It's like we need to get Mono. Just saying, and, you he know, played he was like this, Prince, like, you know awkward, he was good. Yeah. It's like yeah. Prince saw him and he's like, there's something special about you. Yeah. Because I remember him, he would make these like quirky videos where like, it'll be like a random meme video and he'll play bass to the rhythm. So if someone's talking like this, he will make a bass line like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like he'll yeah, make a yeah. bass line to it and be this really awkward, like quirky thing. Yeah, man. But Mono cool. Neon is definitely like a newer guy who's underrated where... He's slowly going up there. I'll have to check him out. But if there's anyone else I would name, that I'd say maybe more back then, and... Uh, what about... G- I mean, he's he's super famous, but I mean, I think he deserves a mention in great bass players is Geddy Lee. Geddy Lee. Do you yeah. think he's an underrated bassist? No, I just think he deserves a mention. I think underrated. he's great. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you... I'll tell you who's underrated, and you're gonna think I'm nuts. But go back and listen to some of the some of the songs, and you'll and you'll realize how good he actually is. Is uh, John Taylor from Duran Duran? Oh yeah, okay, yeah, yeah dude, yeah, yeah. And uh, this is I, it, to getting his eighties out. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay. Yeah. But I have to get my eighties <laughs> in, in every <laughs> and, and actually I have to mention my wife in every episode too. This <laughs> this actually goes. This is this is a okay. shout out to my wife because she up, she is. Um, She's a huge, probably the biggest Duran Duran fan I've ever seen in my life, um, and and a, and a huge John Taylor fan. I mean, you know, honestly, quite honestly, if the guy walked into our house right now and said, "Leave Hector," she would be like, "Bye." <laughs> so, um, <laughs> but that being said, like, there's always been this joke because he's a bass player. There's always been this joke. Oh, he's a better bass player than you. He's a better bass player than you. I'm going to leave you for him. And 
Um, quite, <laughs> as, it's just kind of a joke, right? Yeah. At least I hope it's a joke. Um, I've been knocking uh, on. I just so, wood. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. It, uh, <laughs> no, no, it's you're plastic. good. You're good now. You're um, good now. <laughs> but, but, you know, she's mentioned to me so many times now that he's such a good bass player that, quite honestly, after you go back and listen to some of the old Duran Duran stuff, like with that mindset, the guy is actually a phenomenal bass player. I'm trying to remember there's a tune like something I, Rio. Yeah, like Rio would be that the one. bass oh, line yeah. is definitely has like this like flanger bow, effect bow, 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 on yeah, it that makes yeah. it pop up more. Yeah, that makes just, sense. Yeah, he he is uh, he doesn't get a whole lot of credit for being a great bass player. I gotta, but I, I gotta listen I, back. You gotta to go some, back and listen to some of this stuff. It's it's pretty it's pretty crazy. Yeah. I was trying to think of someone else and. If if it helps, I can't for him to be underrated. I forgot his name, his last name. But the bassist for Queen, I think his. I oh, mean, yeah. Roger, another one like, bites the dust. Is Roger yeah. Taylor the, the bassist or the drummer? Bro, he's the drummer. I think that's the drummer. I think yeah. his name's John Deacon. That's right. Is that the bassist's I name? So. I knew yeah. his name. There you yeah. go. Yeah, yeah. See, so yeah, I think he's an underrated dude. Yeah, that's Just, a solid know, choice too. He's man. making a bass sound yeah. melodic. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of a female bassist that's underrated. Because uh, I think Esperanza, but like, it's one of those, like, if you're a bassist, you know Esperanza. Sure. Yeah, I mean, like, ugh. Yeah, she's amazing. I can steal your heart, man. Just like yeah, her playing yeah. bass soulfully. It's a girl that plays Imagine bass. Imagine if she, t- like, was your teacher, because she teaches. Like, I, I didn't think I, I, I wouldn't learn bass. <laughs> 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 I, would, I wouldn't know what the bass is like. What did I do? Yeah, I'm, yeah, sorry, yeah. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> Yeah. No, she's beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. About the uh, the girl that plays bass for Smashing Pumpkins. Yeah, the original one. The original bass player. Darcy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I yeah, have yeah, a yeah. story about, dude. It's funny you say that. I remember 2008 or nine. like Smashing Pumpkins switched so many members since then. Mm-hmm. And they had a dude bassist once upon a time after her. Yeah. And they were holding these auditions of joining Smashing Pumpkins. Yeah. And I was like, you know, 14, be like, oh, dude, that's going to be me. <laughs> I submit my video. Like, I work hard on it. Like, I started oh, a YouTube you, huh? channel. And, you know, I thought like, I was going to do it. Yeah. And then, you know, they get this chick bassist. You know, it made sense. You know, like, she covers a tune and she got it. And I'm like, oh, it makes sense because, you know, they're kind of filling in the tradition. But it was staged the entire time. They chose her already. Uh, We're like, let's just make a contest about it. Oh, uh, that's lame. And when I found out that little part where it was just like, yeah, we already chose That'll her. That'll ruin a band for you. Dude. So it's like, for me, I love Smash. I love Gish. That's, yeah. like, that's like their first record. No one talks about that one. I kind but, of look um, like a poor man's Billy Corgan. I've been cursed. Oh, yeah, dude. That's true. Whoa. That's Whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can but see the shaved sh- head. Poor, poor I've actually got a Zero sh- hoodie, and, I, oh, and I, I shave my head sometimes and wear the Zero hoodie on Halloween and dress up as Billy Corgan. You know, Corgan. just like make sure you have a really bad sinuses. And... <laughs> yeah, exactly. We should totally, we should totally so yeah, I have a hard, I have a hard thing with Smashing Pumpkins, pumpkins right now. <laughs> they were my favorite band when I was a teenager. I used to just they were once a favorite too them. for like about <laughs> two years. So my whole life was Smashing Pumpkins. Oh, I still love them. Yeah, I, I remember all that stuff. I remember the what the love hate um, relationship for me. You know, I remember the, from one of the first before. times I brought a girl back. I was really excited, and and you know she she was like looking to sort of. Uh, Kind of move things along a bit, and I was t- trying to play a melancholy new <laughs> person's sadness, but uh, uh, listen to this one. That's listen the to this test. one. I kind of missed my chance. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it wasn't yeah. the one. Uh, yeah, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Smashing Pumpkins ruined it, man. I wish <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> oh, you just didn't get it. I don't know yep, which that's one. It is. that one, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you have a, um, when, you, when it comes to writing music, because I know you write all sorts of different types of music in all sorts of different ways, and can you tell us a little bit about that, writing music in your process i'm writing my process yeah you know it's still something i'm trying to figure out i'm not a lyricist i remember there was a time in elementary school like we'll have like poem time and like i would always find weird ways of like creating these rhymes and stuff it's honestly something i wish i like revisit now and i admire like lyricists like you and so many like local talent where like they just find ways to make words into this art form so I'm not, I don't really think about lyrics or melodies first. Sometimes I do. And then I'll like write something around my mumbled, you know, like yeah. whatever. But like half not, formed word kind of. Yeah. Thing. Like yeah. I'm not really much of a singer, you know, I'm slowly breaking that shell. Yeah. But um, for me, my writing progress, I really think about the groove 
as yeah. a basis. Sometimes like I'll write a tune where it's like I'll open up a logic session and I'll come up with a groove or like I'll do an auto drummer and try to find something where I'm like, I'll leave the drums by itself and I'll walk around my house and I'm just like chilling, you know, I'm like making eggs, having coffee, doing something. <laughs> and then I'm just humming something and I'm like, we're all like air base a thing. Yeah. And I'm like, well, I feel something right now with this groove. I'll run back to my computer, route down the bass line, walk away. And I'm like, Trying to jam with the, you know, I'm like listening to the same eight measures yeah. for like <laughs> hours or like to that point. And then, you know, I'll keep layering from there. Right. And there's some, you know, so that's sometimes with bass. Uh, guitar, for me, it's a different approach because sometimes it's a riff and I'll hear this riff enter to this section to another section. And sometimes I'll just write this progressive whatever and sometimes it'll be based off of like the tone or feeling that i'm getting sure. off of this riff yeah. it's like how do i want to translate this feeling are we like going to stay happy is it going to be like this uplifting thing is it going to be dark and in your face can yeah. it be both like i love a lot of things that are like i come from like a multicultural like background so there's always sure. like english and spanish happening at the same time there's always like different things happening simultaneously yeah. Especially living in Florida, we're in a melting pot. So there's yeah, always sure. different cultures happening. So yeah. for me, I love when John was to kind of like put it in a blender, put it on high, see what happens. Yeah. What's the movie we're making today? I think that's something that, you know, we bonded over a little bit because of my sort of love of kind of genre bending and genre mashing up. You know, we definitely have um, sort of worked on stuff like that together in the past and talked about it and enjoyed mixing things up and together. And it was always a lot of fun in the studio with you because you're um, imaginative and also and not, not scared to try different stuff, you know. And um, that was that was a good time. We had a we had a brief period of time where we were making tunes all the time and recording bands and stuff. It was it was rare, yeah, man. man. I th I learned a lot at that time and think you did too. It was you know, I I know that I got a, a lot of knowledge out of those couple of years. You know, especially about close micing drums in small rooms. <laughs> <laughs> the, yeah, if I had, if we had the knowledge of drums now, then we did before, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man. I know. Yeah, yeah. Totally. Well, we had to go through that to learn. You know, there was a lot of stuff we didn't know. But um, considering the the like facility that we were, it was basically my spare bedroom. We got quite a lot done, didn't we? We recorded we quite a lot of albums in there. Groovy records from there. Yeah, yeah. I totally. think it was just fun, just being like you know, having the control. We're like, oh, we have a control room in the live room, and it's just two bedrooms. We just <laughs> yeah. have like a large Marshall, just like fully blasted wood room. And yeah, it's yeah. like two in the morning, and we're just like, we got it. We're not getting that tone. Turn to ten. Turn it to ten. Yeah, thankfully. Uh, had a cool wife. Th thankfully, a uh, very cool wife, a super cool wife, this and also cool neighbors. Yeah, the the guy who was on that side of the house, my neighbor, is the guy who runs he Jupiter live there Music. Anymore, right? He does still live there. Oh, he still lives there. On that okay. side. Okay. Okay. The other side. The other side, so the other side was that English guy, but he's moved. But that now oh, I have boy. like a young couple. But I don't really make that much noise in my house anymore. I do mix stuff, but it's not come that over bad. more. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there it's, fun you go. it's funny because almost every episode, Ben will have a story that starts out with, so <laughs> so when this guy lived at my house or when that guy lived at my house, and yeah. now I, I I feel there's a fostering I, home I, there, I, man. I feel like I feel like this is cool because we actually have a guy that lived at your house. I know. Here at the it's table finally with us. been proven that it's <laughs> right, not just right. making it up. He's not just it's making a it fact. up. It's yeah. fact. Someone actually saw this I'll just cuddle with his dogs. And just, oh yeah, thank you. <laughs> Nina and Molly. I tell you something that's changed, and we brought this up on an episode before. Is now I have this like robot vacuum cleaner. Oh, my house man. isn't They're like a hairball in there anymore. Yeah. Yeah. You How are you actually... liking those? Uh, well, I got to tell you. What's its name? You I've got to tell you. Now. I got to tell you. You know, you were, you were warning me about the disaster that could potentially happen. Mm -hmm. It happened. Oh, oh no. I know what it is. I know what it is. But. No. The way that this one, the way that this one is made, there's no butt. It's the way that there was a butt. It didn't. Like thankfully, it didn't. Only a little area. But I caught it in time. And but the good news was that the bits, 
you can take them out and clean them, and it wasn't like in like parts of it. Oh where you can my clean god! It. So I don't mean so, to laugh at you, but it is funny. No, it's hilarious. <laughs> That's why I told you. I had to tell you. Uh, I was saving. Uh, he it has big dogs oh. too. Yeah, it we don't oh. have to explain it. You so should, now, you know. so now I don't have it on a timer. I'm just doing, like uh, you, like you have, said. They have to watch it. Yeah, like you said. With, with Ke- you know, Kelly was talking about getting one. You were like, you know, we only do it when you're there. Yeah, I'm not going to put it on a timer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Once is enough so for me. Yeah. No, I don't, I don't <laughs> But no thanks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh geez. So um, when you're, I mean, I know this question because you pretty much broadcast it on social media. But do you practice? You know, I where I'm at right now, it's honestly more played in practice. Right. But I've definitely been trying to find my way to inspire me to practice. Yeah. And my process has been right now. Like, as we're teaching and we're gigging, we have to learn a lot of songs. Sure. And I try to practice, maybe, let's say, like, on scales, you know, there's that kind of practice where Mm -hmm. it's like, I like informing myself with all that knowledge and movement. But then it's, like, practice of, like, being creative. So, like, I say, like, you know, I'm going to practice, like, today I'm going to make it, even if it's an eight-bar loop, I'm going to practice being creative and make something out of nowhere yeah or you know i try to find inspiration where sometimes i have to like i had to teach a student of mine like a, for example like a metallica tune and with the resources of the internet you could find old live videos from it you can find isolated tracks like i'll try to like find ways of like you know there's pull out the tab and listen you know and try playing along with it and there's yeah. that kind of practice but then it's yeah. like no like let me like get into the character like what was this guy thinking what was the tone you know practicing listening you know yeah. listening to the isolated track and being like oh i didn't hear that part that was like buried in the mix yeah that's awesome or yeah. you know like i'll try to find <laughs> You know, I'm a big record fan, you know. Yeah. I listen from beginning to end. I'm not a fan of singles. And, you know, back in the day, you know, I had people tell me, like, we didn't have YouTube or not. I put the record on, and I would have to, like, skip the needle over yeah, to go back yeah. to the part. And sometimes I'm really enthusiastic with a, something that I'm learning and wanting to practice. I'll buy the record and replicate that and right. make that creative limitation where it's like, oh, I missed that part. What was that again? And, you know, right. like, I've been really trying to find different practice approaches that it's like, you know, it's just not me sitting down with a song or, yeah. like, here's this yeah. scale. Like, how can I apply You make it interesting something. so it's not just the same old boring repetitious. You yeah, know? and yeah. I feel like, you know. I think there's a lot of stuff you just said. Like, there's a lot to unpack there. You know, like, um, the... the, the there was, that was very dense in information. Like um, one of the things that you said just then, you know, was creative limitation. And I think that that's something which is um, really important in just loads of aspects of creativity. It's interesting that you brought it up in like a kind of practicing um, kind of uh, framework. But, you know, even when it comes to, to when it comes to writing or when it comes to producing, if you, if you only have like a few elements to work with, then you very often end up that that forces you to create yeah. in a certain way, you know, and that that that's very helpful. And you, I don't, we haven't really talked very much about creative limitate, um, about like kind of limitations like that, um, to to become more creative on the on the podcast. And I think it's a fascinating subject. And across the artistic world, you know, it's a it's a thing, you know. Like I know a lot of visual artists or yeah. you know, use certain media just so that they you well, know, to, to give them a, a direction for the piece to go in. Yeah, but it's it's you know, it's it's interesting because as, as an artist myself, um I there's there's certain aspects of of my art. I mean, yes, I create, you know, this piece or I create that piece, much like you guys, you know, will write a piece or write a piece of music or whatever. Um but you know there there is a certain practice if you will you know um you know my 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 main medium is either paint or pastel those are my two main mediums and there is a there is a practice of how to blend the pastels and how to mix the paints and how to do these you know certain things um and I and I do tend to do that from time to time, not as often as I'd like, or not as often as I should. But I do tend to do that. You know, I'll do a, a, a light study or, um, you know, a shading study or something, and I'll and I'll just work some an area of something over and over again until I until I feel like I've got it. You know, a good groove on it. Um, so in a way, I'm I'm not just 
practicing, you know, the equivalent of like say scales or something, but I'm also practicing, you know, how to be creative, you know, how to, yeah. how, how to come up with these ideas and how to, how to, how to push these, these limitations, you know, further. Yeah. And that's, it's interesting that Rocky was talking about that because a lot of people in music and all, you know, a lot of the people we've had on here, you know, talk about practicing as a scales or songs or that sort right. of thing that the fact that you mentioned practicing creativity yeah, like, it's the best answer like, to this question we've had. Yeah, that, oh, that, no it's, it's awesome because because you're you're not just practicing your instrument or practicing your craft. You're actually practicing how to create with that instrument or craft. And that, that's yeah. amazing. How to put it to you. Know, I mean, it's good to have a scale. Once you say you have it down, it's kind of like, well, what do I do with the scale now? Yeah. Right. You know, sometimes it's like, you know, I'll show a student how to play a scale. And, you know, I'll say, all right, so now go from... Instead of going forward and backwards, I want you to go from the first note to the second note and then go back. And each time you go forward, add in a second, you know, that that extra note. Mm -hmm. Or like, let's do things from a group of three. So take a pentatonic scale. So go to the first, second, third note. Now go to the second, third, fourth. You know, like, how can we take the things where it's like, oh, I got to practice the scales. Like, how can we make it sound, apply it to something musical or <laughs> yeah. something, you know, unique. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes it's just like figuring out like what's the outside of the box approach to the boring task or like the practice, you know, like, yeah. you know. The simple ways I do that with scales when I'm teaching them is I, you know, I, 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 I teach them with like a lead in, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And like with a couple of chromatic notes thrown in there, you know, like to like start use like bebop scales or something. And instead of starting with like, da 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 da, I start with like, who already starting to become a lick, you know? For yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. think it's important, like, you know, getting something your work, you know, there's the T's versus like, you know, well, you know, it's good to know the minor skill, major skill, whatever skill, whatnot, but it's like, how can we make that into a creative thing now? There's so yeah. many things that were created with this small amount of information. So it's like, you know, I think that's like the journey. I feel a lot of people get stuck to where it's like, I practice this one thing. Yeah. Now I know it. It's like, how can I be creative with right. that thing that I just learned? Right. How, you how take can it I to put the next it level? into something? Yeah. yeah, I find with some, sometimes it's funny because sometimes you'll you'll get a student, and 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 they won't be reacting to like, okay, so learn this, learn that, and then we can move on. They'll get stuck right at that first point, and that's sometimes when. You know, I have to search around for just for different ways, to different angles just to yeah. get through to them, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, because I think that, you know, if you just approach it the same way with every kid, you can very often just find yourself, find, they, they just get bored. You know, if you, if you just go, okay, well, this is A major, you know, start on fret five with your middle finger and yeah. just do it the same way for every kid. Sometimes, you know, sometimes they just go, they sometimes they just eat it up yeah. and they just do it straight away and it's great and, you know, and then you can move on to the next thing. But I've had students in the past when I was less experienced where I've been stuck on that lesson one for like three months, you know, yeah. and they don't progress past it. And um, yeah, I think making making these ideas of uh making these scales and, and and chords that you learn at the beginning more musical and teaching them within a musical context and even maybe trying to teach them through a creative context you know can can help sort of get them interested and get them starting to swim in it all you know like yeah, yeah it's, it, it's it can be tough sometimes you know sometimes you're just not right for the student you know what i mean you're just it yeah. needs to be someone else and then sometimes you got to find a way in you know yeah. you got to find a way to get them excited about it it's i you know I, i've very much enjoyed my time teaching when it, the biggest lesson i've ever been taught actually um in teaching was justin who's the guy who runs this place, who we're, a live music community where we're recording this right now, he said to me, you know, if you ever feel really stuck and you just kind of like feel like all of a sudden, you know, you can't think of anything, just just figure out what they don't know and teach them that. Like, don't worry about what do they know. Don't yeah. let that stress you out, you know. Like, just back away from it, you know, and talk to them about music a bit more. Figure out what they don't know, and then and teach them that, and then you're filling in the gap for them, and that can help them progress, you know, rather than stressing out that they can like sweet pick better than you can or something. <laughs> yeah, you know? which is like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think that, and that freed me up so. Just that one little bit of knowledge 
teaching knowledge freed me up so much and i've said that to justin in the past it? it's good yeah. advice yeah absolutely yeah totally so um in terms of uh like what would you what's going on in terms of projects at the moment you've got products of rage what's going on with that at the moment uh right now we've been uh having a lot of fun performing uh rage against machine self-titled album yeah cool. i think that's always been like i've always you know I, i've always been a top to bottom listening through a record yeah and that's kind of like off my bucket list of being like to perform an experience like that be very satisfying it's very satisfying yeah. especially yeah. music like that you know i'm a yeah. chill dude right now if anyone could see right now but <laughs> when we start playing that <laughs> yeah. oh man it feels we saw good. your blood spat and it's bass. funny too yeah that's that was fun slapping yeah. bass really hard um, but it's funny too with that project you know we're like the nicest guys you know we're chatting you see everyone was pretty oh. chill get on stage it's like uh, me <laughs> mugging people take a couple steps back <laughs> yeah. but um, that project's doing really well we just played a show at Matthews it was yeah. you know great we, you know it's our first time playing in a minute and we had a great crowd it was a great response and uh, we're slowly gonna try to build a momentum of just like Bringing the the power of, of rage. I remember about a year ago when like a lot of riots and stuffs were going on. We were learning the album, and like as those things, I remember there was like some protest happening in like Clematis, and I'm like learning one of these songs. I just felt them. Yeah. Like I wasn't there. Like I was like quarantining in my room, and I'm just like jamming, and I'm just like feeling their anger. Yeah. And like I felt like. People need to know some of the messages. I know some things are a little more extreme in the political lens with them, but there's a lot of things that yeah. taught me about rage is just being aware of your community yeah. and what is going yeah. on. Yeah. And, you know, that's one thing they've kind of taught well, me. Very so, prescient. I mean, these days, I wouldn't say that the, 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 I think their politics, I mean, they fit in pretty well with my politics. It's, it's not that extreme. Pretty spot really, on, really. You know, yeah. it's just like, it's like, you know, they just, yeah. concerned about I, inequality and yeah. you know that's basic i think they're very yeah. good people and yeah. it's a wonderful message and it is projected in this kind of angry way but yeah. the message is really one of love i think that's i think we're conscious as a band where we're not the dress up look you know yeah. i'm the bass player i should look be the singer our our singer mandy looks like chris cordell we have him being zach <laughs> yeah, yeah. so you know i think we we want to be the entertaining force and britain you know celebrate their music that's to me is timeless like yeah, absolutely i've timeless. been playing there like with flea uh tim cumberfold is one of my strong influences too because he was playing bass before uh, with a guy playing guitar that didn't sound like a guitar right, like yeah. how can you be the foundation for that yeah. So for me, the Rage Project, we're trying to, you know, ra you know, close your eyes and you can hear it. But also, it's like I think my Lord and Ever, there's some messages too that you know, oh, sure. it'll wake up some people. No so doubt, bro. we're definitely trying. You know, that first album has a lot of strong messages, so we're definitely pushing that. Um, we're gonna be back at and Matthews the actually oh, to throw in. I'm gonna throw in some dates. Yeah, do it. Uh, July seventh, ninth. Oh man. Seventh, ninth, seventh, the seventh, seventh. So I'll, seventh, I'll, yeah, you made the five. You, 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 yeah, you, you can know. You you continue, know. continue Call and me I, Hector. Will, I will. So yeah, set we're you playing back at Matthews in July, and we're also playing Swampgrass later on in that month on the twenty fourth. Oh, cool. But um, yeah, so we're trying to get back, seeing if there's some venues who want to, you know, experience some rage. Yeah. So doing that, we have been talking about doing some other things. I'll leave, I'll leave it as that. Oh, that's but, uh, interesting. Right now, that's just been a fun July, passion project. July 9th. July 9th. Yeah. July 9th. I yeah. have horrible dyslexia, so that 9 kind of <laughs> opened up around. and it just <laughs> became a 7. <laughs> so, But, uh, but there's that project right now. I haven't played at Matthew since they've redone the sound system. I've Dude, very I got things. to play that stage for the first time, and it's so magical and awesome. Oh, wow. It that's just, cool. I was able to run around and just be a goof on stage. Yeah, I saw, I saw a video of you uh, kind of practicing on the stage by yourself. Yeah. Like I got that. a new, I got a new stage, amp. Yeah. Killer stage setup. Yeah. yeah Shout no, out to awesome. Matthews for setting yeah, up a man. killer stage. And keeping man. live music alive, man. I'm yeah. grateful to yeah. have that such cool venue like in Lake Worth. That's like my hometown. L-Dub. Yeah, but man. Um, yeah, man, it's cool having that. So. That's what's been going on with the products, a rage tribute. Great. And I've been working with outside from that, which is uh 
going away from the more aggressive things i've yeah. been playing with a lot of you know awesome like senior songwriters and artists like yeah, i remember with sierra lane yeah i've been playing she with her for a few guest. years yeah she was man yeah. and you know i got in to see her grow and yeah. bring her music out there i've also worked with you know jump in with a lot of other people like vibes farm he was yeah. tyler was here yes yeah. he was and uh you know worked with jacob tacos who's an awesome dude you should have him here man he does ne nothing negative oh, he's, he's a great to him. dude yeah. he is groovy man he's on the list um judd hoffman's a cool cat from nashville who comes down here and he'll be oh, like neat. hey dude you bass player so as of right now you know i've been the Parade group is kind of like, I would say, my group, even though it's not my music. Right. But, I, you know, I've always been someone that, you know, I've always found an opportunity to support someone's music and play a role to bring their tunes to life. Yeah. So that's been kind of like at the moment where it's, you know, hey, I heard you're the bass player. Can you, like, you know, learn these tunes and blink them out of time? And, you know, I'm at that right now. <laughs> But I think that's something that you think about. I, I know that's something you think about a lot and something which I, I, I respect about the way you approach it is your boundaries when it comes to that kind of thing. Like you'll talk about certain projects and be like, you know, I'm just here to facilitate them. I'm helping them. And that's where I draw a line. You know, mm -hmm. and then with other things, you're like, I'm all in with this. This is me. And you and you and you separate yourself like yeah. that with things like if I'm in a quarter of a band, I'm going one hundred and ten percent of yeah. being that quarter. Yeah, yeah. And you know, sometimes that's intimidating to some people and I'm I'm some I'm some you know, music's my thing. Sure. And especially in the pressure of it being your career too, there's those boundaries are just like, are we doing this? Yeah, like, are, you yeah, know, yeah. like are we on the same page yeah. here? Yeah, yeah. And so I think it's important to have those boundaries and you know, communicate because there's sometimes you're in a group and someone's like I'm here just to party. I'm here yeah, just, you know, trying yeah, to grab yeah. some chicks. Or I'm, you know, I'm doing this because I have a nine to five and I just love singing to people. Yeah, you know? plenty of bands and all with those, guys like all that. those reasons are okay, are okay. Yeah. So it's just kind of like, you know, just finding your people and finding a tribe. Really, yeah, it man. can be tough, you know. And you might find your tribe, and then your tribe changes, and it's not your tribe uh, anymore. I've, you know, I've gone through many tribes yeah, yeah and yeah. i've always gained something out of those tribes that have made me the character who i am today strong lessons and experiences that i'm definitely grateful for because I, I i never went to i was supposed to go to berkeley college of music and you know there's sometimes i think about the parallel universe if i was taught with this and i have you know all this money spent on this degree and whatnot and, you know, I learned so much just from getting my ass kicked, from being the guy that no one wanted to play with to, yeah. like, bass players are an endangered species. I heard you could learn songs like this. Like, yeah, come yeah. on in. So I'm, I'm definitely blessed to have those abilities and skills and, you know, respect from some to help support people's music and yeah. whatnot. And, you know, like, hey, you need, like, you know, like, I'll get calls where sometimes we'll, you know, there's like an opener and like, I need someone to like learn this bass and like really help bring my songs to life. And so like, you know, it's just having a role. Yeah. Serving the song. Yeah. Like, I think that's some great philosophies to have, like, you know, as a bassist, guitar player, singer, sure. you know, like serving the song yeah. and knowing your role. Yeah. Yeah. Especially totally. like any team, you know, outside from music too. Yeah. I know that you also um, have, have, been involved in church music and i think that some of that um i imagine that the some some of the uh discipline involved with having to do that every sunday was probably a pretty good thing you know like uh, oh, helpful yeah. especially in you know in those years and in, in, in your early 20s when when you know you could have been being more wild and stuff i imagine that was quite a steadying thing to have every sunday you know? yeah i there's still you know I You're definitely think I'm still playing at church, you know, yeah, to me, cool. it's like my form of just community service, you know, yeah. like not really doing it for the cash. You know, they know there's some churches they'll know, like I do this for a living. They'll throw a little something. But yeah. honestly, it's like I just like knowing like in any music in general that this is enlightening someone like they're a moment of praise and all of that yeah. is what's going to get their week going. To me, it's like if I can do that. By playing that music and kind of help oh, and awesome, lifting huh? that, yeah, you know, yeah. and like you know, I definitely think you know, <clears throat> I grew up in a Hispanic church, which is similar to like, well, like, 
like black churches and whatnot, where it's just very intense and yeah, like, yeah, you sure. know, like sure. soulful. Like sometimes the music is longer than the actual service itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, I remember learning bass, you know, that's how I learned bass was, you know, they needed a bass player and I knew upright and guitar. That's all I knew. So I would get lessons from the piano player, teach me about melody and chords. Drummer teach me about time. The percussive to being like paying attention to auxiliary moments. I like I would get my ass kicked. I'm thankful yeah. for like, you know, it was funny too, because like I'm a rocker dude as well. Even imagine, you know, I'm like the kid wearing an ACDC Led Zeppelin shirt, angel dude like this. I'm going to church with that. And I'm yeah. like, all right, I'm gonna learn this instrument. You know, <laughs> they're teaching me this discipline, but also being like, just turn your shirt inside out. I'm like, oh, dude. So like I'm definitely grateful for some of the lessons that I just feel like in general, I'm always, I learn the best when I get my ass kicked. I think Not everyone learns that sense. way. Makes but sense, uh, I, I know. I, that, that, you know, I, I, like, oh, I, you were born with that listen, talent. I was like, no. Dude, listen, it's I, not I a God given thing. God gave it to me. You know, <laughs> I only learn when I get my ass kicked, dude. That's, yeah, the, only, that's the only time yeah, I learn. Some, someone once said, and I don't know who it was, but someone once said something to the effect of, you know, we learn more from our failures and our accomplishments. And there is no yeah. doubt about that. It's true. Yeah, and it's still a hard pill. I feel like it's like metaphorically stuck in my throat because sometimes I'll see a failure and I'm just like, damn, I could have done, you know. Yeah, oh, sure. Being yourself sure. up and all of that. But then you got to remember it's like you've gone through certain failures and you grew from that in the past. Yeah. So it's a reminder when it happens again because it will. Yeah. You no know, yeah. spoiler alert. It's you. You're going <laughs> to fail if you didn't know. Yeah. You know, don't worry. You're While watching the movie, hey, it's going to happen. <laughs> it's going to happen. You know, it's not yeah. a Disney movie. Yeah. You know, it's not a happy ending. You know, yeah, so it's like the well, building the reaction. In all fairness, most, most people lose their parents in Disney movies. So those are pretty tragic, too. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. They also have like eyes this big, which must be horrific. <sighs> we we anyway, just, we um, just. We just, we, just, logic. we just watched uh, the new what is it, Cruella or something today? Oh yeah, and, and it just oh. it just like it it was just starting, and somebody made a comment because uh, the girl had a mom or something, and somebody made a comment, and you know one of my kids or somebody made a comment about like, oh, it's a Disney movie and she has a mom, and I said, don't worry, they'll kill her off soon. <laughs> sure enough, spoiler alert for those yeah. that haven't seen it, I'll the old I'm not gonna the, see it. The mom dies in like the first ten minutes of the movie. I'm like. <laughs> Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> Someone made a really good point about that movie recently, which is like, you know, relatable villains in Disney movies, but how can you make a relatable villain about a lady who kills dogs? Mm. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's a whole There's a story. movie for everyone out there. Yeah, I guess. Uh, Maybe in a Disney theme. Uh, I think at this point, because it's so much fun talking to you, but I realize that the clock's ticking here, I think it's time for you to play us some music. I would love to play you some music. All yeah, right, man. let's get Can it I on play more thing. than one instrument for you? I think you should definitely That would be play fantastic. I'll do it. Right. <laughs> we double dog dare you to. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, Ben. So, uh, so this uh, this episode we have not one, not two, but three amazing sponsors. That's right. Yeah, for uh, for Rocky's uh, episode. So, ho- hopefully, you're feeling the love there, Rocky. Oh, yeah. Um, first off is uh, Douglas Pool, uh, sponsored with Amazing Results Landscaping, and that's his landscaping company that uh, they do commercial landscaping uh, the, yeah. and, and maintenance, uh, of course. Um, that's what it says on the tin. They amazing do, yeah, results. Yeah, they do. Uh, they do tree trimming. Um, they do installs. You know, landscaping installs and stuff. They'll they'll design some stuff for you and uh, and and. You know, pretty much do uh, all the all the purchasing and installing and everything of all oh, the great. all the stuff for you, um, and then they do you know maintenance for uh, for commercial landscaping. So you right. know the weekly, biweekly, monthly, you know however however you work it out. Um, but uh, has a, an amazing crew, um, a lot of attention to detail and stuff, and they and they do an amazing job. So um, landscaping's integral down here. Stuff grows so fast. Oh god, it's ridiculous crazy. how fast it grows down here. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean we we've got some stuff we're doing at the house, and and uh, I'm going to be doing some landscaping here soon. And and uh, I've I've already had uh, Doug on uh, on my on my mind um, to give him a call for for the landscaping. Uh, him and I have uh, have done some other business things together oh, I've done, I, I actually uh, did some t-shirts and stuff for his for his crew recently so oh nice yeah yeah so um anyways uh, amazing results landscaping man definitely give them a shout out um you know give them a give them a call uh if you're watching this their information uh their email and their phone number are on the screen at 561-662-1762 um you gotta and, love that email address hedges123 right? at aol.com and, yeah. can't forget that and if you are uh, if you're listening um, all their information will be in the show notes. Their their uh, email address, phone number, you know, any contact information, anything like that will be in the show notes. Uh, so, um, and that's whether whether it's the uh, the podcast version or the video version, either one will have the show notes uh, information in there. So, yeah, amazing results landscaping. Cool. And uh, and our second um, sponsor tonight is Maximum Friction. Maximum oh, Friction. Right. Yeah. Is a killer, killer youth band. Yeah, um, these kids are like, wh- what are they rocking? Like between thirteen and seventeen, or something it's like that. Ten to fourteen. Ten to fourteen. That just, just amazing. Um, uh, and uh, J- uh, Jasmine is her name. Yep. Yeah, she plays bass and sings in the band. You she, teach this, it, ain't you? I do teach. Yeah, yeah this, this has been my pad for one. This a while, kid man. is ridiculously good, and I'm, and I'm not talking like. You know, these kids aren't playing like, you know, three chord punk songs. I mean, these kids nope. are playing Black Sabbath and Iron Maiden and Rush, Metallica, Megadeth, Eric Johnson, System of a Down. I mean, just really incredibly complicated, awesome rock music, man. Proper rocking out. And, and you should, um, Jasmine has just got the soul of a rock star, man. You see, oh, see God. It, yeah. They, they do hard rock, metal. Um, I mean, just, just amazing. Um, so, uh, Maximum Friction, you definitely want to find them on, on Facebook. They, uh, they have, um, I'll, I'll, I'll be putting all their information in the show notes as well. Um, yeah. so, you know, people can find them properly. These um, guys aren't just snapping you know, at all of but our heels. They're going to take one of our feet off. It's like, you know, that's yeah, fantastic. Oh, oh God, they're ridiculously good. They're ridiculously yeah. good. And Jasmine's done a bunch of really cool projects. You know, it, she's, she's collaborated, she's collaborated, um, over video, uh, via video um with with uh i believe in in thailand yeah, yeah like musicians with as Penny. far away as, as thailand yeah. it's it's, it's cr- been a cool project to watch from really afar. cool yeah, yeah for really sure. cool so yeah maximum friction man uh you know give them give them a listen um go support them they're they're awesome local musicians lost some yeah. local kids and you know give them a listen and and support local they're, music they're man. the real deal you know they you are go the and deal. see some young use playing rock very well go and see them play. I recommend them <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah highly, highly recommended yeah. and then uh and then our third sponsor is our uh, our our uh yeah we have a um so handlebars um bar and grill has has um it's, it's now the official sponsor of um of the yeah. podcast yeah. It, uh, they're, they're sponsoring us every week which is um just so great and it, honestly we, we couldn't do this without sponsorship so um we're incredibly grateful um 
It's a biker bar up in uh, Tequesta, right on the border of um, Palm Beach County and Martin County on, um, on US One there. And it's a it's a biker bar. So um, if you have a bike, um, roll up on your bike and you'll get to see a whole load of cool different um, types of vehicles there. You have people showing up in rat rods and old sports cars and classic cars and all sorts of interesting stuff, as well as across the board interesting bikes vintage bikes you know yeah. new ones like yeah, like crotch rockets all the way to kind of like beautiful old triumphs and bsas and stuff like that so if you're a you know if 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 you are into cars and bikes you can w- want for a better place the other good thing about it is that it now has live music mm-hmm. on saturdays from 7 to 10 p.m. On Sundays from two to five p.m. and every second Thursday we have a bike night. Um, I'm involved with it. It's my father-in-law who, uh, who basically um, has rejuvenated the place. It used to be called yeah. Judy's, yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, and I'm I'm helping any way I can. I'm I'm helping him book the music and and you know I've little bits and bobs here and there. But it's really my father-in-law Peter Panella who is uh, running the show up there, and he's doing a great job. So um, come and support us because it is 100 percent local local musicians, lo- local staff, lo- locally owned, locally run, and we would love to have your support up there. A lot of good beer. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of good food. Yeah, if you're mm-hmm. you know if you're hungry, we've got you. We've got a chef who's been there for um, two or three weeks now and has really settled in. Has just made the place his own, and um, and we have a, a huge selection of um, beers because um, Judy's was known for having um, loads of interesting German beers on tap, and we've tried to keep that going. So we've got a great selection of beer there as well. And um, really, the only things wrong with the place prior to us taking it over was it was just getting a bit run down. And, you know, um, what we've done is we've uh, modernized it a bit, updated it a bit, cleaned it up. The beer's cold. You know, the food's delicious. Everything's run yeah. properly and professionally. Yeah. We've built a big deck out the front and it's, um, you know, it's it, it's great. It's g- good stuff. Yeah, it's a cool it's a cool spot. So, yeah. so thank you very much to them. Um, thank you again. Amazing results. Landscaping, Maximum Friction, Douglas Poole, who... Uh, yeah, thanks, who, Doug. Who, uh, you know, sponsored for for both of those, and then um, of course Handlebars, our our official sponsor, if you will. Um, you know, thanks again. We couldn't do any of this without you guys. So Absolutely appreciate it. So Rocky, man, not one but two instruments, man. That was a very interesting performance. Yeah, Thank man, so that was that was cool. I like the I like the switch up right in the middle. Yeah, that was that that was from a jam. Uh, I had my my good friend Alex Mandel. He was playing keys on that track. That's Shout a dude who to Alex Mandel, to Alex Mandel. Yeah. who who actually uh, works here at uh, Live Music. Works Community. Live Music. Yeah. He's yeah. a front man for the Products of Rage group. Nice. Long time good friend. We've done so many projects. That he was in the Junk Band too. Oh, okay. Was fun time. Nice. So, yeah, like, I we've always that. found ways to collaborate together, and yeah. like we just work really well. And you know that was just like you know. I last minute was saying like oh, I need to do music, man. I need to figure something out, and you know, we always get together where it's like brand new, like open project on Logic, and we're like, you know, I was playing like a little drum beat, I settled it in, and then I'm like, oh, I can't come up with a progression, and he's like, I play two instruments, he plays guitar, bass, keys, drums, sings leads a show you know produces so like yeah, he's a pretty solid know, dude he's awesome man so he he influenced me as like a local musician that needs some credit you know nice he, to hear one of that it was a real sort of classic sounding break you had on there real kind of classic sounding vinyl kind of funk break it sounded yeah, cool bad. yeah man like he's top you know just making an idea and putting it out he's definitely i have to you know keep shouting him out for that but like he came through this morning you know i made this you know the drum beat trying to make it sound old school yeah i'm like oh here's like this like electric piano sound and like i had an acoustic bass and we were just playing to the drum beat till we found the progression i'm like oh wait oh, let me press record and then you know there you go. yeah that's so cool. I, I gotta thank homies like that you know who like inspire me to like create an idea you know sure. i can't say it's just me well, I'm, and you know, we I see you on on Facebook and Instagram and stuff doing your wake and bake 
um, bass sessions and I, I always that's think it. that's like a lot of fun and you know this kind of reminded me a little bit of that you know where it's like you you, you put together this cool tune you're kind of jamming over it you know yeah. I love watching you do that like you know if you I, I, it would be great if you did that every morning I'd watch that oh, man. <laughs> if anyone's ever checked out Rocky's uh, wake and bass sessions that he does yeah, on social man. media you should check that I've out I've been They're wanting to like work on consistent content yeah. life and Excuse, fill an excuse here, you know, <laughs> always take his advantage of it. But I've been trying my best to kind of figure ways of doing the, I would love to make that like maybe a weekly thing, right. see where to go, you know, yeah. jamming out. But you know, that's, that's why, I, you know, sometimes I wake up and play bass and I'm like, oh, let me have a camera up front and like yeah, hey, say hi you? to someone. Maybe someone wants to see me play bass. Well, yeah. like, <laughs> like I, t I told you earlier, man, like, you know, I love, I love seeing those little, those little video clips you post or whatever. And, um, you had posted one a while back about I think it was during the pandemic during the lockdowns or something about you know uh, playing triplets on the on the, oh, base the gallop or, yeah the ga the gallop and that'll and get I, you and I I started messing around with that and I I've just recently started putting it into a couple of uh, Kilbilly covers that we That's do cool um, you know on on the upright on the double bass wow. and uh, and it's just cool that you posted it and that inspired me to do that yeah. so it's you never know who's watching your videos and who's, sure. who's pulling and me just hearing that makes it's, it's like all right you know you gotta keep doing it for sure man <laughs> and you know i think that's just you know i think that's what the world you know not for me but for anyone it's like you know if you have something cool you can share you know like a gift or something you know like yeah, that man. video was me learning it i didn't even know how to do it yet yeah, that was yeah. just me like hey let you want to see me like not be good on bass let me show you the thing i'm trying to do uh, yeah, yeah and just to know go. like i eventually get it keeping my own but knowing that oh let me try that too you know like yeah, that's yeah. fun yeah. seeing that like i had someone um they posted a video of them doing some yoga and it was like this like time lapse thing they're doing it fast i'm like man I need to do a stretch. That looks so cool. Let me do that. Yeah, it's fun, yeah. like when social media gives you that positive, creative sure. thing because sure. it's a it's a Russian roulette of like, you know, the oh, lottery right. ticket spin. You know, yeah. where it's like you can get anything, on there. man. So I'm <laughs> sure. happy to hear videos that I make at a whim yeah, goes man. there, man. Because yeah, I really want to keep that a consistent thing, whether it's waker base or educational things or there you go. base stuff. Because base is awesome. So base is awesome. We do a little segment towards the end of the show where we talk about people's gear. And um, I wanted to, um, I said to you earlier, and I hope it's all right if we have a little bit of a talk about your telly, your beautiful yeah. um, little telly. Can I grab it? Can I grab it right now? Um, yeah, sure. We're going to put a picture up, but you can grab it as I wanna well. I want to grab it because it's my baby. Yeah, go grab it, dude. <laughs> this is my nine. Hello. This is my 1992. Fender American Standard Telecaster. This belonged to my dad. Um, I was born 93, so I have been raised with the guitar in my crib. I have, like, there's a baby picture somewhere where I'm just literally just sleeping with it. Yeah. And, yeah, like, you know, is. this is for the 90s kids, you know, like, hey, you know, Tommy Pickles had a screwdriver. This was, this was my thing that's never left my sight. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the tone of a guitar was always this in my head. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, tellies are such an odd instrument. You know, people think country first or something. Yeah, I always wanted to make to it them. funk. I always wanted to do reggae or, like, metal. Or yeah. I always try to make this do that sound. Yeah. And uh, I love it, man. It's awesome. There's, like, so blood here from, like, a tour I did a while ago. Yeah. I don't want to leave it there. I don't like scratch plates either. Yeah. But uh, I think this guy's cool. this guy's been great. I got like to tell you, man. I'm more, we've been talking about bass a lot, but I also have an appreciation for guitars and whatnot. I'm a telly guy too, man. Yeah, the tellies. Like people like Strat, telly battles. I'm like, yeah, nah, man. I, I have, telly. I have, I have a whole mess of bass guitars, and then I have uh, a, a, two acoustic guitars and one electric guitar. And the only electric guitar I have is a telly. Yeah, <laughs> good on you. If you're <laughs> yeah. a telly, you can do so many things with yeah, just, it's a just telly. Too, or it's also very like versatile. as a tall dude, yeah. that body shape just yeah. fits well. Yeah. Like every other guitar feels it just, tiny. It just feels on good. Me. Yeah, tellies are great. So I love tellies. Yeah, cool. I also I, I think we've got some. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your bass rig? Like, what do you use when you're playing out? Well, just recently I got a new bass amp. Um, it's a Mark bass. I can't remember the exact one, and uh, it's a 115 combo. I love 15 speakers. Yeah, 
there's just a sound. I'm, you know, do people get like tens or twelves? Right. I'm fifteens just like magically work for me. And uh, yeah, you've all the pros, 15. all all the pros I know use Mark Bass. So I was able to find this one fifteen combo, two hundred watt preamp on it. And it's the lightest thing ever, dude. Yeah, man. Like, this is an Italian brand. Like, you know, they know how to make good food, and I guess they make good amps too, man. Because <laughs> Barney, all the- my guy, my ba- the bassist in Sonic Boom Six, he used Mark Bass. Yeah, right they're right when they first started coming out, you know, when they, the and tiny everyone was like, "Wow, dudes. why? How are they so small when they first started coming so out?" So lightweight, just to carry like a one fifteen yeah. fits in there yeah, too. Yeah. I see so many pros uses it, so that's been my thing. Prior to that. Uh, I've been lugging around a 1968 Fender Bassman. <laughs> I love that thing, dude. With uh, look at it, it's so beautiful. It's a, the 50 watt combo, the 215. That used to be my only bass amp. I remember, dude. I've that carried that thing in in and out of cars once or twice. I was given that combo <laughs> by one of my first bass teachers um, from church when I was learning. Yay. He gave that to me, and he said, "One day you're gonna use this," and then eventually. I went to this smoke shop, and I found this amp head, and it was the identical one. I showed it to the picture. I'm like, I have the cabinet. You gotta sell this to me. And there's like, and this is just the imagery. So imagine front counter smoke shop, homies eating like a large supreme pizza to himself. <laughs> and this is what he tells me. And I show him the picture, freaking out, being like, I have to have this amp head. I have the cabinet. How much do you want for it? And he's like, you know what? Let me tell you something about this. I was in a Detroit punk band, and I toured around with it. It was awesome. And how I got it, my friend left it in my garage. And how he got it, he was in this punk band. And then he got it in his garage. And then how that guy got it, you know, he basically said the same thing tens in a row because he was like stoned out of his mind. He's being like, (laughs) he left it in this garage, this garage. I guess to the cities, I'm just kind of like, (laughs) <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> uh, I'm just like anticipating he's like you know what now it's my turn to leave it in your garage oh, no. and he sold to me super cheap and That's I amazing. freaked out but again there That's was the just there was, it's, it's really dude it was awesome Keddy from uh, I don't think he runs Purple Haze anymore but he's an awesome dude like film actor musician actor film director guy but um yeah, so I've had that forever, and I used to tour with it. And I, again, used to be my only bass amp. So mm-hmm. I would come through tiny little venues with this Monster giant cabinet. guy, and I had to re, you know, get the tubes worked on, cones, yeah. re, you know, worked on and whatnot. So it's one of those things where I'm happy that's just in my studio, and I just keep it there. If I want that yeah. tone, it stays at home. Oh my, oh, I've got some amps like that now where I've retired them, you know? Yeah, you know, like yeah. they're not fun, you know? Yeah. And that's honestly, that that tone, like a lot of people play guitar through that amp and, you know, you get this perfect clean sound. But when you play bass through it, it gets this crunchy, yeah. Yeah. like overdriven sound. And We've like, used it to record with like... A, a, with you know, No Name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember No Name, we used that. We even used yeah. it as guitar amp. You know, it's just a versatile... <laughs> basements are just versatile amps. Yeah, totally. So having that We've, in my arsenal has been... It's a dope amp, man. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, listen, it's been so much fun to talk to you. Yeah. I've it had really a blast talking with a, y'all. It's been a blast that you came over and did this. And um, it was only a matter of time before we had you on. And, um, and, and um, you know, I'm glad it was sooner rather than later. And um, I think we managed to impart some prodigious wisdom there. I think we actually managed to say something. You, you know? think so? Yeah, I think so. Nice. Yeah, no, yeah, it was yeah, good, yeah. man. It's good yeah, stuff. For sure. So, so this episode is going to drop... Um, not tomorrow, like but next week. Yeah, it's going to be the, the 24th at midnight. So that weekend, like next weekend, uh-huh. you got any gigs coming up that you want to plug or shout out? Um, I can't think of anything up till then. Okay. But I remember bringing up some shows, the July 9th show. Yep. July, yeah, July 9th, Matthews. We're going to be there. I'll That's going to be awesome. I'll we have Beautiful link. Disaster opening up. There was oh, also yeah. students who I've taught since they were this big and now they're kind of like this big but now they're gigging and stuff man yeah man yeah, i one time i had thing. a gig where i was loading into a gig yeah. and they were loading out 
imagine me being a teacher, you know, like I was telling mm. you the, the circle first, effect yeah. where like yeah. I'm the punk ass kid, I'm a te- yeah, and there was yeah. a teacher, and now I'm the teacher. Yeah. Now I'm loading into a gig and someone's like, like, hey Rocky, how's it going? When we were and playing the same festival as Sierra the first time, I was like, oh, you are gotta be kidding me. This is happening. You know, that was a big hit, that one. Well, cause not in a bad way at all, just like I remember seeing her there and I was like, it feels like yesterday that you would like I you just know, learned I was it. teaching you yeah. how to play yeah. something, you know, and you were like like a little girl and now you go like fronting a band in the same festival as me. Oh, it's so awesome we, seeing uh, that. You know, it's I, super when, cool. When I met Rocky, he was you were you were a senior in high school at that point. I believe so. Yeah, he was a senior in high school at that point, and then at and then at one point the uh, our Nirvana tribute and his Rage tribute played a played a show together at that Kelsey Theater, and it was kind of it was kind of cool because it was our last show as the Nirvana tribute, and it was that their was first big show. breakout show. As a rage tribute, so it kind of felt like we were passing the baton a little bit, oh, like the, the tribute yeah. baton, you know. So that, that was, was a legendary that. show. That was a good man. show. You got into CV, you got into CV, be that, that you yeah. know, punk ass kid too, yeah. punk yeah. ass adult. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah, it was fun. That was a fun show, man. I always suspected that you felt like that. I could see a little look in your eye when you talk about products of rage. I always suspected uh, you had absolutely. that. Feeling. Oh, I absolutely love these guys. Dude, yeah, I, I remember um, when you had a different Kurt Cobain, the Junk Project would play with you guys. Right. <laughs> right, and then we would have a really? joke, or like we would, you guys wouldn't do a song, and we're like, "Oh, we know Breed, we will do it, do it with us." Mm-hmm. And it was like, "Oh, the ghosts of Kurt Cobain's coming through, playing with Junk the Band." Yeah. You know, we're these yeah. teenagers just freaking out, like, "There's a Nirvana tribute!" Wow, uh, yeah, it, was, it was good times, man. Right? So, good times. I always admired that, man. Well, but we there's norm- those shows. We normally do ninth. our uh, Kill Billy's shout out or shameless plug at this point. But I need to check out. When's but, your next show? But I am currently. But you uh, will as be, of you oh, listening wait. to this, I'm currently in England. Yes. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so no Kill Billy's gigs. I that wish weekend. I could sing or guitar yeah. to fill in for you. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm That'd be fun. Yeah. You fronting Kill Billy's would be a sight to behold. Oh yeah, cool. guy with dreads playing <laughs> some <laughs> but good I'd old folk dudes. But what is essentially next week? week um two weeks from me now but next week from you listening oh, right man, now that's complicated yeah yeah for those of you listening and watching it's next week for you next week. um we are gonna have uh sally fox maple she's uh she fronts fox and foes fox she's solo artist fox maple she's also the fox maple band yeah um and uh as ben, ben mentioned he will be on on holiday during that time he'll be in england so i love how g- you honor the fact that i call it a holiday it's absolutely very sweet of you. absolutely i love all <laughs> the things so that you've taught me about the english the proper english language <laughs> yeah. everybody just correct me on something i'm just like whoa I, yeah and I'm i glad use I, I use brilliant all the time now too <laughs> thanks to ben um so uh, yeah, so we're gonna have her on here, and uh, because you're gonna be in England, I'm having uh, James, our our bandmate from Kill Billies, yeah. and uh, Butch and the Fat Dubes from Legendary. the last episode. Uh, yeah. He's he's gonna come here, and he's gonna co-host with me. So. That's awesome. I hope so you guys sh- have a blast. I'm kind of jealous because um, yeah. I've got a lot of respect for Sally. So enjoy yourselves. Well, listen, and, we uh, may we may uh, FaceTime you or Zoom you into yeah, the into, you in, into, into the, the future, uh, thing man. just for a little bit and just yeah. to say hi. Yeah, right. That'd be quite fun. I reckon. We can probably figure that tech out. I don't think it's too yeah. hard. Yeah, I think so. I yeah. think so. All right. So, well, yeah. I guess that's it. So thanks so much, Rocky. Put it down. Yeah, man. Uh, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Oh, there, we go. <laughs> there you go. Thank you guys for having Appreciate me. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, yeah, awesome. I'm a fan of this of five six foot music since I have it. So yeah, thanks for having it, you guys. Yeah. See you later. Cool. Woo. Liquid Death sponsor me. Liquid Death sponsor me.